Okay, so I will have the screen share. Okay, allow me to share my screen. Can everybody see the problem already? As projected, can you see the problem? Can you see the problem? Just uh, a thumbs up sign would do. Yes, miss. Okay, thank you. So yesterday we had this problem regarding a two-stage battery that is being used to obtain 80% conversion under the specified conditions below. You have the feed rate, you have the initial concentration of A, and you have the rate equation or the rate law. Now this two-stage battery, after several days of operation, the flow is stopped meaning the flow that is introduced into the first of the two-stage battery and correspondingly the flow to the second of the two-stage battery is also stopped. Then the two reactors are allowed to uh, continue processing the systems inside them, but this time with, without having any connection. So the illustration of this was shown to you yesterday. Now the two reactors, the content of the two reactors would then be taken out when, so the condition is this, when the average of the concentration is the same as the steady state effluent concentration from the second reactor or from the last reactor if flow was not stopped. So the question is how long will the two reactors process the, the system inside them after the flow is stopped between them? That way, the particular condition will be achieved, and that is the average of the two concentrations will be uh, the same as the steady state concentration if flow was not stopped. So I will not anymore write down the illustration for this because that was shown to you already yesterday. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing and open the Jamboard. And share this one. Okay, just inform me if the you can't see the jamboard. So for our solution, we'll start writing the concentration of the effluent leaving the second reactor. The concentration of the effluents leaving the second reactor would be the concentration CA2. And that would be equal to the initial concentration that is given in the problem multiplied to 1 minus XAN. Now, this XAN is the overall conversion that is stated in the problem, which is 80%. So, uh Okay, wait, I, I'll show to you again the problem so you can take a screenshot and you can go back to it as we are uh, discussing the solution. So you can easily uh, refer to the problem itself. So this is our problem and it's stated here that you will have 80% con conversion for your system. So this 80% conversion is not the conversion on the last reactor only, but rather the conversion for the entire system. So a two-stage battery is being used to obtain 80% conversion. So this one is not XA2, but rather XA total for the entire system already. 
So that is why if we go back to our Jamboard, I hope you can see the Jamboard. We have this particular formula. The concentration of the effluent or, or the stream leaving the second reactor is equal to the initial concentration times the quantity 1 minus XAN, where XAN is the overall conversion. So if we will substitute values now to this, your CAO is 1.5 mole. Uh, per cubic feet, and you're going to multiply it to 1 minus 0.80, the conversion for the system. So this will give you a CA2, which is 0.3. Of course, having the unit of pound mole per cubic feet. Now, it was shared to you as well that we have this particular uh, formula for a two-stage battery of equal size M. FRs or CSTRs, we have CO or CAO divided by C, depending on what C you would like to solve, is equal to 1 plus the K times the tau. And this will be raised to N, depending on the, the number of the particular reactor in which you're interested to determine the concentration of. Since in this case, we know already the concentration of the stream leaving the second reactor. So we're going to have it here. And of course, the end that will be placed in here later is equal to 2 because we've labeled this as 2. So specifically, I can write this now as 1 plus k tau raised to 2. For example, in a scenario, you will be asked for the uh, concentration of the stream leaving the third reactor. So this would be CA3 and this will be 3. Okay, so just showing to you how you're going to use this particular generic formula uh, shared to you yesterday. So in our case, you can substitute values in here with only the tau being unknown. We want to know the processing time or the space time for our reactors to process one reactor volume in this case. So again, replace the value of 1.5 here. And you have CA2. The C2 is the CA2 that we have determined there on top. So this would be 0.3. And we have 1 plus. The K is taken from the rate law that was shared to you in the problem. So that would be 0.2. And you have the tau. And this is squared. From in here, you get the tau, the space time. Specifically, that would be also the tau 1 or the tau 2 because they are identical CSTR, so expected the space time will be the same. And that would be 6.18, in this case, minutes. Okay? So in here, you have determined so far the taus and the effluent of the, the concentration of rather the stream leaving the second reactor or the effluent from the second reactor. So any questions so far from these two uh, computations that were shared to you before we determine the concentration of the stream leaving the first reactor? And that is we will determine CA1. So in here, we have determined first CA2 because we're given the overall conversion. Now from that, we can solve for the space time. And since we know the space time, since uh, we can now solve for the CA1 based on this same formula. So we'll have CO over C1 equal to 1 plus K tau raised to 1 in this case with the goal of determining CA1. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so if there's none, then we go to the next part of the solution. So we will determine CA1. So same formula, you will have CO, but this time I will play C1 equal to the quantity 1 plus K tau raised to 1. Because this is 1, so this must be raised to 1. The number here in the a subscript of the concentration that you like to determine and the N here should be the same. So you have to take note of that for uh, equal size MFRs or CSTRs in series. So we'll have now in this case... Your CO is 1.5, and your C1 is the unknown in this case. We'd like to determine that one. You have one 
plus we have 0.2 still for the R. And we will use the tau that we determined in the first sheet. So first slide, and that is 6.18. And this is raised to 1. So in the process, you get now C1 or CA1. Now CA1 is 0 0.6708 pound mole per cubic feet. Okay, so you have CA1 here. And you we determine CA2 in here. So if you're ever wondering why, what's the purpose of determining CA1 and CA2? Because at normal operating conditions class, this would be this is would this would be the two concentrations of the streams of reactor one and two, the streams that is that living reactor one and two, if the degree of conversion that is given is point. Eight, where that is 80% conversion. So if the flow is going to be stopped from these two reactors, this will be the concentration from the first reactor, the, the stream leaving the first reactor, and this is the concentration of the stream leaving the second reactor. So you already have CA1 and CA2, and this will be the two starting concentrations when each of the reactors stand alone is going to process the system inside them separately. That is when the flow is stopped, this will be the two initial concentrations. So you have 0.3 for reactor 2 and you have 0 0.6708 for reactor 1. So if you're wondering why what's the purpose of this, this would be your initial concentrations for the two reactors once they are to process the system inside them stand alone. Okay? Now, since we know already these initial concentrations for the two reactors, then you're just simply going to write down the rate expression, and that would be DCA DT for the two reactors which are going to process the system inside them once the flow is stopped. So you know this already because this is the given rate law in the problem. So amunin siyang ginhatag na rate law sa problem. So we just switch the two. So you have negative DCA over CA and you have here KDT. Now in this case, if you're going to integrate, integrate here from zero to T, and this one is to be integrated at CAO, to CA1, for example, or in that case, the CAO here will be the CA1 and the CA2 in our two uh, compositions in here, concentrations in here. So I'd like to have this, uh, we'll just have this as Initial concentration here could either be CA1 or CA2. And this is the one that is CA1 prime, which I have represented already last meeting. That was yesterday or CA2 prime. So let me again emphasize, what's the difference between CA1 and CA2? The CA1 and the CA2 is your starting concentrations for the two reactors when connection between them is stopped already. And this is the these are the two concentrations that we have solved. Whereas CA1 prime and CA2 prime are their final concentrations when the flow is already stopped between them. So, amuna na ilang final concentration. We know the CA1 and CA2 based on these two values, which we have solved earlier, but we don't know this. So, what we're going to get from here are just expressions in terms of time. So, these two expressions, of course, will be based on the evaluated integral of negative DCA over CA and KDT. So, in this case, class, you will have a negative LN of CA1 prime over CA1, and that would be KT. And another one, this is one equation, which you can convert if you transfer the negative sign in here for the uh, on your KT will be, and then you raise 
all the entire expression as the exponent of the e. So you will have here CA1 prime is equal to CA1 e raised to negative kt. This k is the same for all because we are referring to the same reaction. Okay, this t is the t that we want to determine. The time we're in, each of your two reactors stand alone will process the system inside them until when the average of their concentration is equivalent to CA2. So in this same integral, uh, this one, the same integral, you can also have negative ln this time of CA2 prime over CA2. And you will have still KT here, which will give you CA2 prime equal to CA2 e raised to negative KT. So you have these two equations based on what I have written on the given last yesterday. So these equations you will add, divide it by 2, and equate it to CA2. The effluent concentration if flow wasn't stopped. So after here, if you don't have any questions, but you can raise uh, your questions uh, later, we can add the two expressions. So then you will have CA1 prime plus CA2 prime divided by 2 is equal to CA2. Your CA1 prime from the previous slide, this one, you will copy. So you have CA1 E raised to KT plus CA2 E raised to KT, negative by the way, we divide it by 2. And this would be CA2. And what is CA2? That would be the same CA2 in here if the flow wasn't stopped. So that would be 0.3. So this is 0.3. Now the CA1 is the CA1 that we solved here, which is 0 0.6708. The CA1 is representing the initial concentration when flow is stopped already. So you have... 0 0.6708 e raised to your k is point where there. What is our k in this case? Let me check. Our k is 0.2. So this is 0.2. You have t plus the CA2, which is 0.3 e raised to negative 0.2 t still divided by 2 equated to 0.3. From in here, you will be able to solve for the time. Each of the reactors process the system inside them when flow is stopped. So in our language, pagkauntat na sa flow sa duha, ano kadugay ang time i process nila ang system sa sulod, starting with the concentrations that we have solved. And this time will be this, the time that you are getting from here. Now, if you have your calculators with you, you can check the time. And that time is... Uh, 2.4 minutes. This is the time that is sought after by the problem. So if I go back to the slides here, do you have any question? So we determine CA2, we determine tau, so that we can solve for CA1. Because we cannot solve for CA1 if tau is unknown. And we can solve only tau in this case if C2 is known. So nagangwa, if you started writing this particular equation, you will know that you need to find C2. Okay, class. Uh, can you hear me, class? Which part of the discussion was not... Did you not hear? Good morning again. Which part of the discussion were you not able to hear?
Sa CA1 na nga part. Sa CA1 nga, ta, nga part. Okay, wait ha. Uh, here in the CA1 part, you got this. Were you able to listen to this one, the discussion on how the two expression for CA1 prime and CA2 was arrived at? Uh, were you able to get the discussion? Were you I was... Were you able to hear the discussion on this part here? I don't know which part was uh, disconnected. Oh, sorry. Were you able to get the explanation class on how this CA1 prime and CA2 came about? Hello, can you hear me? Class, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. yes. Mahir nyo po? Go to do tot. I switched to data because PLDT yes. is very yes. unstable. So which one? Were you able to get the explanation on how the formula for CA1 prime and CA2 prime came about? I think there are a part na to this. Dere ko na part na utod. Yes. Sige, sige. Can you please message me sa messenger kung na utod ko ka hindi ko ka late ka ayo sa ano di kung na utod ko nagtudo naman ang ulan. So hindi ko kahibalo kung na utod ko kay kalawig na gali isang explain ko na utod na ko. Okay, wait class ha. Message me please a messenger kung nakat na ko para I, I will know. Okay, I don't have any knowledge if I'm cut already and I keep on discussing na nakat na ko gali. Uh, anyways, we determine the concentrations CA2 and CA1 first because this will be our initial concentrations when the flow is stopped between the two reactors. Excuse me, class. After that, you're going to write down the rate equation for each of the reactors stand alone already. And since you're going to use the same rate law, so that you will have negative DCA DT, which is negative R sub A, is equal to KCA as given in the problem. So using separation of variables and using the initial concentrations as CA1 for the first reactor and CA2 for the second reactor, you'll be able to determine the CA1 prime and the CA2 prime for the first and second reactors respectively. So if you use CA1 to CA1 prime first as your limits for this integral, this will be the expression that you will be getting. And after simplifying this LN expression on the left, you will have CA1 prime equal to CA1 e, uh, e raised to negative KT. So we eliminate the LN by making this expression on the left and the right side of the equation as the exponent of the E. So we have done this before, so this is your formula. You can do the same for the second reactor with initial concentration as CA2 and final concentration as CA2 prime. So in that case, you will have now CA2 prime equal to CA2 e raised to negative KT. 
these are the two formulas that you need to take the average of because they represent the final concentrations of the reacting systems in your two reactors when flow is stopped already. So in the next slide, you will be able to see that these two formulas were averaged and equated to the value of the final concentration of the stream leaving the second reactor. So the expressions that we have for CA1 prime and CA2 prime were averaged. So it's divided by 2 and equated to 0.3. And we and in I was disconnected again, class. I was disconnected again, class. So which part am I going to repeat again for the end time? Morning, class. Okay, now. Please, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, miss. Oh, my. Sige. Share ko ulit, ha?
Okay, we'll repeat again. Hopefully, hindi na na siya mag-putod. We started determining the final concentration of the system. The concentration of the stream leaving reactor 2 using the overall conversion, which is 0.80, or that's 80% conversion. And using the initial concentration, which is 1.5, and that will give you a value of 0.3. Based on the formula that I shared with you yesterday, the CO over C is equated to the quantity 1 plus K tau raised to N, where N is the number of the reactor in which we're interested in determining this C. So in our case, we want to determine the space-time and we substitute the computed CA2 on the C2 and as such, the N here in the exponent of the expression 1 plus K tau will be 2. In the process, we determine the space-time for all identical reactors and expected to be equal as 6.18 minutes. Now, since we know already the space-time, we can go back to the same formula, substitute the space-time here, but this time determine the concentration leaving the first reactor. So this will be C1 or CA1, and this N will be now 1. And that's what we did here on this particular part of the slide. Now, the first step in solving this problem is determining the concentrations leaving the, the concentration of the streams leaving reactor 1, which is CA1, and reactor 2, which is CA2. The purpose is for you to have an initial concentration that you will start off with when these two systems are going to process the reacting mixtures inside them separately when the flow is stopped. And based on the given and required representations which I gave you last yesterday, uh, we represented the final concentrations for reactors 1 and 2 as CA1 prime and CA2 prime respectively. So your CA1 and CA2 in here that was computed will represent the initial concentrations for this integral coming from the rate law because you're going to work out on the same rate law for the reacting systems uh, which is identical to determine the expression or the formula for CA1 prime and CA2 prime. So using separation of variables from your DE, this is the expression that you'll be getting after evaluating the integral and simplifying, it will allow you to arrive at this equation for CA1 prime. In terms of CA1, which is 0 0.6708 and the time, K is known already to be 0.2. So CA2 prime will be evaluated. Uh, it came from CA2 prime or ln of CA2 prime over CA2, the negative of which is coming from the same integral that was evaluated using differences of limits. So you will have now CA2 prime equal to CA2 e raised to negative kt. Now, in the process, you have now a formula that represents generally the final concentrations of the streams leaving reactors 1 and 2 when flow was stopped already. So based on the condition that is stated in the problem, flow is going to be stopped when the average of these two concentrations is equal to the steady state concentration if flow wasn't stopped. And the steady state concentration when flow wasn't stopped is CA2. So we place in here the equivalent expression for CA1 prime and CA2 prime. And we also substituted 0.3 here for CA2. So now in here, you could see an equation which has T as the unknown. Because we want to know the time after flow was stopped when the two reactors is to separately process the system inside them. And then after which we're going to get the average of their concentrations. That's the time that we're going to take out the system from them. So when flow is stopped, you need to wait for 2.4 minutes. Uh, that way, the average of the concentrations of the actors 1 and 2 will be equal to the concentration of uh, the stream leaving reactor 2 when flow wasn't stopped. So this is the time, 2.4 minutes after cutting the connection between the two reactors, wherein the average of the two concentrations will be 
already the same as CA2, the final concentration of the stream leaving reactor 2. Uh, do you get the explanation? Or is there a part in here in the solution which you need me to explain further? Uh, is the constant, uh, is the, is it clear? Do you have any questions? If you don't have your microphone, you can chat, uh, you can type on the chat box. None for me, miss. Okay. Thank you, Gio. We'll give the others a minute, then we'll proceed to the second sample problem or to the next part of the slide. I think there are no questions, so we will now proceed to the next part in the PowerPoint slides. So I'm sharing this with you. So that's the problem that we just discussed. Now, what about if you have different sizes of MFRs in series? So if you have different sizes of MFRs in series class, you have to do uh, material balances or you are to apply the performance equation uh, piece by piece. Or you're going to apply the performance equation for the first reactor so that you get to know the either the degree of conversion on the first reactor or the CA1 in the first reactor, then you can go to uh, a class. And then you can go to the second reactor in that case because you already know the initial concentration or the initial conversion from the first. So what I do, you have to do it step by step. There is no generic formula that will solve for final concentration, CA1, CA2, and CA3 in this case on the figure that you see uh, four different sizes of MFRs in series. So you have to apply the performance equation separately in each of these reactors. Uh, the formulas that were shared to you that will determine the concentrations in each of your reactors is only applicable for identical reactors or meaning the same size. So your tau will be equal still to the volume of the reactor divided by the volumetric flow rate, which in this case is just equal even if your reactors here are of different sizes. So the volumetric flow rate that enters the first reactor, the second and the third has to be equal. Now notice that your CAOXA was now represented in terms of differences in concentration. Uh, yesterday, I have emphasized that it's suggested by the author of our uh, major reference book, Levenspiel, that instead of working on conversions, you work out the equation in terms of concentration. So since we're talking about tau 1, the space time in this first reactor, so your CaOxA1 in that case will be the CaO minus CA1. So in this case, it's represented as CO minus C1 over the rate 1. Why is it specifically written here as rate 1? It's because class in here, your rate would be represented, for example, if it's a first order reaction, as KCA1 because you are on the first reactor. If you are on the second reactor, you will have the rate represented as KCA2. Why? Because you cannot anymore use CA1 because you are already in CA2. And the values of these two, the CA1 and the CA2, of course, are not equal. So, amo na nga nakaspecify, siya nga, rate 1 siya. So, again, if it's the first reactor, that's rate 1, which is KCA1, if it's first order. 
If it's second reactor, that would be rate 2, KCA2, and so on and so forth. Now, in here, you have a gener generic representation of how you're going to represent the, the reciprocal of the space times. So in this case, ginsuli siya klaso, 1 over tau i, i representing a particular reactor, and you have here the rate. Actually, class, this should be i, not 1. The rate representation in terms of tau i, because your rate now is dependent on the uh, I, whether it's 1, 2, or 3, because your concentration that appears there should also be based on 1, 2, or 3. I'm referring to only these three reactors. So this is a generic representation. It's always the concentration initial minus final. But in here, since you place negative, so it's now final minus initial. If you don't want to worry about this one, you can have this as your performance equation for the first reactor. For the second reactor, you can change this to V sub 2, and you have to change this to C1 minus C2. Why? Because your CAOX, your CA1X1 is your uh, initial concentration of the stream entering the second reactor, which is C1 minus C2, its final concentration. So, malain at the rate. And the rate here will be rate 2. In here, it would be V3 over V. And in here, for the difference in concentration, that would be CA2 minus CA3 over rate 3. So, you have to process each of the reactors step by step. Uh, in our language, you cannot, uh, hindi ka kalumpat, halin, halin ka di sa una, so diretsyo ka sa three, hindi. Isa-isa hon, magigit na siya kung hindi sila para riho sizes. That way, you can determine uh, whatever the problem requires from you. That is if you have different sizes in series. Um, now, if you're going to compare the volume for the following cases, you have a single reactor achieving X3, meaning ang ginahambal niya na di, you have a series of MFRs of different sizes of different volumes. And if you want to just simply add up, add up all the volumes and have one B total, what would be your conversion for that? So you have only one MFR of volume equivalent to these three different sizes of MFR uh, compared to the three reactors in series ach achieving X3. So this one, the second condition is isa isa hon maged. You determine XA1 here, then determine XA2 here, then determine XA3 here. So the question is, how is the total volume of three reactors in series related to the single reactor? So the total volume of uh, the three reactors, of course, will be the sum of their individual volumes. Don't expect that the degree of conversion X3 you'll be getting from that if you're only going to have one performance equation for the three reactors will be the same if you solve it step by step, first determining XA1, XA2, and XA3. So they will never be the same conversion. It, the conversion X3 in the first scenario and the conversion X3 on the second scenario will never be equal. So as to how they will be related to, it depends on the conversion and on the rate equation. So it depends na siya kung ano yung rate equation. But most certainly, in the pariho, ang conversion nga mas solve sa condition I and condition II. There is another question. Can we model PFR as a series of N equal volume CSTRs? So the answer is yes. However, we've discussed this yesterday. As you increase, as you increase the value of n, the behavior of your identical equal volume CSTRs in series will be comparable to just one TFR of equivalent volume uh, of your n reactors, specifically n MFRs in series. So you just have to multiply the volume of one reactor to the total number of CSTRs in the series. And you will need to work it out. You will need to work it out using the performance equation this time of the PFR. However, if the number of CSTRs, identical CSTRs in series is very small, hindi gina siya comparable ang iyang degree of conversion sa PFR. 
So if you remembered uh, yesterday, I'm not sure if it's in here. It's in here. That as we increase the number of N of equal size CSTRs in series, in here N equal to infinity, the behavior is comparable to that of plug flow. But you notice that if N is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until 10, it's still not plug flow. So meaning it is only resembling the behavior of your system will only resemble that of a plug flow for your N CSTRs in series, identical that is if you have a lot of N. So infinity means a lot, very big number of CSTRs. That way we can say that it's, performance is the same or comparable to that of one PFR. Okay, so it is clear that when you have MFRs of different sizes, you have to do your material balance piece by piece on your units. You cannot use the equations that were shared to you yesterday. Now, what about if you have different reactors of different types in series? Oftentimes, class, the configuration is like this. You start off with a CSTR because it can process a bigger volume. Then you have in the middle the PFR because your degree of conversion in the PFR is higher than, again, another CSTR towards the end because we want as much as possible to have production increase. And CSTRs are used if you are, in, uh, you are to process bigger volumes of feed. So that is why the, the configuration that is being shared to you here is actually the ideal configuration. If it's just two reactors in series, the CSTR always comes first. You always uh, place in the series the PFR last because it's the one that gives the higher conversion uh, in terms of the two. So your X sub N here that is the conversion for your system, not just the conversion for a particular reactor, is the most of A reacted up to reactor N. So meaning the most of A reacted here in CSTR plus the most of uh, A reacted here in the PFR plus the most of A reacted here in the second CSTR or the last reactor in our configuration. That is the most of A reacted up to reactor N, not just the last reactor here, but all the amounts of A reacted in the three reactors divided by the initial. So that would give you now the total, or that is the overall conversion for your system, the entire system of these three reactors of different types in series. Now, this particular formula, and the formulas that are shared to you here below are only valid when there are no side streams. No side stream meaning there are no added input streams here or uh, leaving your particular system. So it's only one input and one output for each of the reactors. There is just another side stream. It's a different story, but we will not cover it anymore. So all our systems will be only single in input, single output. Now you have here the three formulas with the performance equations applied to them. So for the first CSTR, your V1 over the molar feed rate that enters your entire system, and that's your FO or FAO, is equal to X1, the conversion of the system in the first reactor minus the initial conversion. Often, this XO or XAO is zero, meaning the system that enters the first reactor in your configuration is not converted yet. So it's still about to be reacted. And you have here rate one. I explained what is this. So this must be rate one for the first reactor. And since this is CSTR, then that would be only having CA1. So if you have B, that would be CA, CA1, CB1. If you have two uh, species reacting. In the PFR, this is the performance equation. V2 over FO. So this time the volume two the volume of the PFR divided by the molar feed rate. Notice that this is still FO from here. Why? Because what you have here is X1 and X2. You have conversions 
the you have now a stream that is initially converted x1 and its final conversion is x2 degree of conversion that is and you do have here dx and you have here the rate the rate here is negative uh negative R A, or let's say for example, since it's A, it's negative R A. If it's first order, that would be K C A. And you're going to change the C A to C A O, but however, you're going to use now this conversion. Instead of uh, 1 minus X A, the X A that you're going to substitute later on will have an initial value of X1 and a final conversion of X2. So again, if I will annotate so it will be clear, this is how it's going to be for the PFR that is. So you will know. So here for your PFR, for this one, I'll just write it here. Your rate will be, for example, your rate law here is KCA. That's your rate law. Then the rate that will appear here will be this one will be K C A O 1 minus X A. Now you're going to have, right? You're going to have an integral here, which is a differential of X A. So these two are constant. So what you're going to process is actually just the integral of DX A over 1 minus X A. Once you have evaluated this, the limits that you're going to apply is X1 and X2 because you already have a pre-converted feed, meaning you have already an initial degree of conversion for the feed that is being processed by the PFR. That's it. So if, for example, you have second order here, my CB, Pagidera, so you will have this one. I'll write it here na lang. So you have DXA. This is a different scenario. KCAO, 1 minus XA, CBO, 1 minus xp. I think I have overly emphasized how you're going to convert the expression cboxb to xa. So it depends on the stoichiometry this time. If you're going to have this distributed, since this is a constant, you can have a value for it. Your cboxb can be expressed in terms of caoxa depending on stoichiometry. So if it's just A plus B forming C, then the CBOXB is just CAOXA. So you have DXA over K, CAO1 minus XA, and you have here CBO minus CAOXA still. These two you can take out from the integral because they are constants. You can take the product of that. This will be processed together with the DXA, the 1 minus XA. This CBO is a constant and this CAO is a constant. You just need to substitute whatever other values of this two and you have XA. So you have an integral which will be needing method of partial fractions in evaluating. However, if conversion is known, so you have XA1 to XA2, you can easily have this inputted in your, oh, sorry, XA2. You can have it inputted in your uh, calculators and the entire expression can be solved right away because anyway, you have the limits. So you always have to make sure that whatever is your rate law, the expression should be all expressed in terms of XA because you have here a differential which is in XA. And we have several examples already on that. So I, I hope you know how to do it. That way, you can evaluate your given integral. Okay, that is in the case if you have, that is in this particular cases that I've placed here. So it's a no case-to-case basis. Pwede man lang siya first order. Mas okay pag it kung zero order siya. Okay, wala siya sa concentration term. So you only have the XA over K. So the integral is XA. All you have to do is substitute the limits here. Now, before I go to the last, do you have any questions? Any clarification? So everybody understands? Okay, so if there aren't any questions, and then I will erase everything here.
and we'll go to the next la the next part here. The third formula is for the third reactor, which is another CSTR. So this is V3. This is still FO. So this one. And you have conversions here, X3 and X2. And you have rate 3 here. Rate 3 then would be KCA3 or uh, CA3. So if it's second order with two species A and B, so it could be K, C, A, 3, C, B, 3. So that is why it's specified there as rates 1 and 3. Okay? So that's for three different reactors connected in series. Now, the next would be... Okay. Okay, and move on. Wait, why can't I move on? Wait, class, ha? Okay, so for reactors in series, this would be how it's done graphically. Okay, that was presented to you there. In the previous slide, and it would be boiling down to these expressions. So the sizes of the reactors are all highlighted and represented by these areas in your curve. And we have this second sample problem. So the elementary irreversible aqueous phase reaction A plus B forming R plus S is carried out. Uh, yes, Gio? Miss, my question for Miss. Uh -uh. Sa formula, wala, miss, before sino. And then? Oh, miss. Ang FAO, wala, miss, nagigamit. Amo na siya ang nag-enter sa first. Oh, first FAO, good. FAO, or, good. Or ano, example, we miss for V3, miss. Ang gamito na FAO, hindi ang reacted na before siya nagsulod sa V2. That's sa already sa accounted here, oh. Kay X3 minus X2 ka na Gio. Oh, miss. So, FAO, oh. good siya. Kaya ang game mo, di nga mga degree of conversions na gamit mo na si X2 ang pasulod ni mo. Mini ang gwa si niyo, ang FAO X3, di ba mo ni siyang imo nga amount nga nag-react minus FAO X2 ang mo ni nagsulod. Okay. Saan niya, miss? Sa second? Sa second, dili? Dili, miss. Oh, miss. Ang FAO... Same lang na sa first yes. gate. Yes. yes. The formula as it is starts with all has FAO because your conversions are written here already. Oh. X3, uh -huh. X2, XA1, X2. So FAO, gina siya Gio. Sige, miss. Thank you. Ah. Ah. Okay, some more questions. FAO, gina siya ya ha? Amo gina ya aton nga formula. Mo ay na? Sige, sige. So, we'll proceed ko ha. Where was I? So, the elementary irreversible aqueous phase reaction A plus B forming R plus S is carried out isothermally as follows. Equal volumetric flow rates of two liquid streams are introduced into one cubic feet mixing tank. One stream containing 0 0.02 mol A per liter and the other 1.4 mol B per liter. The mixed stream is then passed through a 4 cubic feet PFR. So you have now two different reactors. We found out that some R were formed in the mixing tank, concentration of which is 0 0.002 mole per liter, which makes the mixing tank function as a back mix reactor or an MFR or a CSTR. What is the concentration of R at the exit of the PFR and the conversion of A in the entire system? So I suggest that you take out a screenshot of the picture. That way, when I write the solution, you have you need only to refer to this particular, uh, to your copy of the problem. Okay. So now we go back to our jamboard, and this will be our second sample problem.
So you have a CSTR. followed by a PFR. So in here you have two, actually you have two streams introduced in the CSTR. One is having A and the other one is having B. So this is CA. CA concentration of, or CAO prime, concentration of 0 0.02 mole per liter. I will explain later what why is that CAO prime. And this is CBO prime, which is 1.4 mole per liter. Your first reactor is 1 cubic feet in volume and it was noticed that you have a partly converted system from the mixing tank so it was uh, deduced that it is a back mix reactor and you have this formation of R so CR is equal to 0 0.002 mole R per liter so this is actually I'll place it as CR1 because that's the amount of our form from our first reactor, which is the Bakmis reactor. The plug flow reactor where it is connected to has a volume of four cubic feet. And in the problem, I think you are asked for the final concentration of R. So that would specifically be CR2. And another one is, so I'll place it in here the XA. So if it's not XA1, if it's not XA2, then that would be the overall conversion for your system here of CSTR and PFR. Okay. Now the system is aqueous in nature. So then we can conclude that epsilon A is equal to zero. So if you go through the problem that you have taken a screenshot of a while ago, uh, is there anything here that, like, that we can add in terms of the problem that you have solved? So if this first stream for uh, CAO with CAO concentration of 0 0.02 has a volumetric Chlorate the VB, a VA, sorry. This is A. So this is A. And this one is VB. We can add here that the volumetric chlorates of the two are equal. And as such, the total volumetric chlorate that enters your mixed flow reactor is the sum of the two, which is equal. And if we represent this as V, then we can have here V prime. This could be 2 V prime. V A and V B equal to V prime, which are equal. Then the sum of the two is 2 V prime. I think that's something that we need to write down here. Now, if we start our solution, it has to be made clear that the initial concentration of stream A and stream B would not be the initial concentration of the system now of A and B. Because if, uh, if you go back to the problem, this is a separate stream from this one. A stream is different from B stream. So we need to determine really what is the true initial concentrations of this, of the stream, which is a product of these two streams, which is being mixed in our back mix reactor. If they have equal uh, volumetric flow rates, then we can assume a value for this volumetric flow rate initially to be one, or any value will do and solve for the initial concentration, the two initial concentration of species A and B. So in this case, your CAO is really 0 0.02 divided by two, which is 0 0.01 mole per liter 
and your CBO is 1.4 divided by 2, which is 0.7. So this is a mole B per liter. So these are your initial concentrations. Okay? So if we go to the performance equation for the mixed flow reactor, now M is equal to CaO XA1 because it's our first reactor divided by the rate 1. So if you're going to write the known information, the initial concentration is already 0 0.01. Uh, that's based on this one, the 0 0.02 divided by 2. So 0 0.01, we multiply it to XA1 and we divide it by the expression for the rate. So our rate in this case, uh, you have an elementary uh, reaction uh, for species A and B, so it is KCA1, CB2, CA1, CB2. So this would be 0 0.01 XA1 divided by, so I will have here KCAO, you have 1 minus XA1, then we have CBO1 minus XB1. Now, simplifying further, you can have that uh, B of the mixed flow reactor divided by the volumetric flow rate, which is the V in our representation here. I'll go back to the first slide first. That's the V, the sum of V, V A and V B, which is V prime. So that's just V in this case. I'll place it as V. So that's it. Or probably we can place here a V sub O. Okay. Volumetric flow rate. So we can have this as V sub O. By the way, this one is, if it's not clear, that's the volume of the mixed flow reactor. So you have here um, this CAO actually and this CAO will cancel, which is 0 0.01. So I might take it out from there. So you have XA1 over your, your K and you have um, 1 minus XA1. I already canceled this two. And your CBO minus CBO XBM. Your CBO... We know it here to be uh, 0.7. So you can place it here, 0.7 minus, based on the stoichiometry. So the problem gave you the stoichiometry. What's the stoichiometry that is given in the problem, by the way? Are you there? Yes. So what's the stoichiometry? That's A plus B forming RNS. So I was asking a while ago uh, if there are other in information that need to be added on the given. Uh, is this the uh, is this the stoichiometric or is this the chemical reaction? Yes, miss. Yes. Okay. So if that is it, then you could see the CAOXA will just be equal to CBOXB. You no need right to write to write it anymore. So I can write here CAOXA1. Your CAO is 0 0.01 and I'll have your XA1. So that would be it. Now your CRO. CR1 is actually CRO1 plus XR1, okay? The amount of R formed in the first reactor is equal to the initial amount of R plus the amount of R due to reaction. Now, if you're going to distribute it here, your initial concentration of R is zero. There was no mention about any R initially present uh, in the stream because there was only mention of A and B, so we can assume it to be zero. So your CR1 is equal to CROXR1. 
CROXR1. And you could see that your CROXR1 is the R that was formed in the first reactor. And this has a value. So if we go back to the given, it has a value of 0 0.002. The XR1 is XRO. Uh, the CR1 rather is uh, CR1 XR1. So you have here uh, 0 0.002 mole per liter. This is your CR1, which is your CRO XR1. Okay, so you have it here, 0 0.002. And based on stoichiometry, your XRO, XR1 over 1 is actually CAO, XA1 over 1, which is CBO, XB1 over 1, based on stoichiometry, the very important chemical reaction. So kung amon siya, okay, kabalo na tasini, actually we can replace this one, the... 0.01 XA12 since it's the CRO XR1 2.002. So in this case, you will have now uh, a formula that will solve for the value of the K and the V sub O. So we will do that. Uh, here, your volume for the mixed flow reactor is 1. Your mixed flow volume is 1 be divided by V sub O. Now I'll keep the XA1 there. Your XAO, XA1, if I'm not going to crush it out from here, that would represent this one, right? The 0 0.002. So if we're not going to take it out from there, pwede lang siya ibalik, then we will have a value for it. So hindi siya pag i-cancel out. So if we'll not cancel it out, I'll take this one. I'll rewrite it as is para hindi na ta mag-solve XA1. So this is CAO XA1 and this is CAO. And this will be, wait, wait, Gio, CAO XA1. And I'll have this one as CAO minus CAO XA1. So I can write away uh, substitute. So I'll, I'll erase this one. So I'll have everything in terms of the CR form. So I can place here CAO minus CAO XA1. And I'll have here CBO minus uh, CAO XA1. Yes, G, you're raising your hand. Miss, ang V sub O, hindi siya mag 2 V sub O, miss. Ang? Ang, ang V O, bila miss. Ah? Miss, doa man ang nagsulong. V O lang. Kaya si V O, ginrepresent ko as 2 V prime. Ah, hindi mo siya pag i-substitute to miss sa formula. Ang 2 V. Kaya ang, ang total mo nga nagsulod sa system mo, Gio, is VO. That's the sum of V sub A and V sub B. I just represented V sub A and V sub B, B as V prime because anyway, they're just equal. So, ang muna nag 2V prime. So, kung mag-solve ako dire based on performance equations sa mixed flow, dapat V sub O. Kaya ang muna siya ang total nga nagsulod. If you want to know the values of the V primes later on, divide lang sa 2A eh, kung ano ni siya si V sub O. Divide mo lang sa 2, that would be the V prime. Or that would be the individual volumetric flow rates of stream A and stream B. Okay, nice. Thank you. Sige, sige. It's okay. So I have this now. Na substitute ko na ang 1 cubic feet. And then your CAO XA1 is the amount of R form based on stoichiometry. So diretsyo na ako substitute. Hindi ako mang cancel because if I do that, that would be okay. But I need to determine XA1 separately. So I have a K here. Your CAO is 0 0.01. So this is where it's going to prove useful. Minus the CAO XA1 which is 0 0.02. 
0.002 by the way and then this is 0.07 uh, for B, X, B, O and then another 0 0.002. So in here you will have an expression for K over B, O which are all constants. The K is the rate constant and the V sub O is your volumetric flow rate, the sum of the volumetric flow rates of stream A and B. And this is equal to 0.3582. So this could be your first equation based on the performance equation of the MFR. So before I proceed to the PFR, do you have any question here? Any question, none? Okay. Then we'll proceed here to the PFR performance equation. So we know for the PFR, the tau P, that would be the volume of the PFR divided by this same volumetric flow rate that uh, was processed or feed rate for that was processed in your mixing tank or your CSTR. And this is equal to CAO. TXA over the rate. Okay. Now from in here, uh, it was suggested, right, that it would be best if you work out uh, your performance equations if you have a series of reactors in terms of concentration rather than conversion. So we know that CAO, DXA actually came from this one the negative DCA over the rate, right? We know that it came from there. And the CAO DXA is negative DCA, and then we still have here the rate. Uh, if we will integrate this from, since this is the plug flow, this will be from CA1 to CA2. So it's easier if I do that. So I will now have here, uh, negative, so DCA still, integral from CA1 to CA2, and this rate will be K, C A C B. So we have a problem with CB here because it needs to be expressed in terms of CA. So again, negative DCA, K, C A, and this CB will be expressed in terms of CBO, minus CBO XB. Now, in this case, this is not CBO, right? CA1 to CA2. If we're doing this uh, not connected to the first one, but this one is already uh, a representation generally of the CB coming from the first concentration or the concentration initially of the system that entered your first reactor. So if I'm going to ask you, there should be a way in which you're going to represent CBO minus CBOXB in terms of CA because we're going to integrate in terms of CA. So how it's going to be? So we'll leave it for now as equation. We don't have any equation yet, number here. So we're going to go back to that. So that's our okay. We have one here. So this would be our equation two already. So equation two, that's your tau p expression. We're going to go back to this because we need to represent this as in terms of CA. So how it's going to be. So we know that your CBO minus CBO XB, I'll place here but, is equal to CBO minus CAO XA. By stoichiometry, your CBOXB is just equal to CAOXA because everything is one is to one here. Okay, so we have that. Your CBO minus CBOXB then is equal to CBO. This is minus, by the way, minus. Your CAOXA is, in terms of CA, is actually what? That CAO minus CA, generally. We know this, right? 
the initial concentration minus the final concentration is actually the concentration that has reacted generally. So I will represent this. You may have a hard time understanding that one. So I will represent your CAOXA in terms of CAO and CA. So this one, I will not anymore write it because it's just the same, is CBO minus CAO in a negative, negative will be positive CA. So I can now change this expression by this, which is in terms of CA. So I'll go to the next slide. So I'll write here from two. Your tau P, which is equal to negative DCA over KCA integrated from CA1 to CA2. Now, the expression CBO minus CBOXB, I'll change to this one now. And by the way, we have values for CBO and CAO. So I'll, I'll place it in here. So for your CBO, you have 0.7. And for your CAO, you have 0 0.01 plus CA. That way, when I substitute it there, it would be not requiring another line. So 0 0.69 for 0 0.7 minus 0 0.01 plus CA. So, amo na siya ang ma-replace sa CBO minus CBO XB. So, 0 0.69 CA. So, this will be 0 0.69 plus CA. So, this will be your performance equation for your uh, plug flow reactor. But we need to connect it to, we need to connect it to, to the first equation that we have of B sub O over K. So, in this case, I'll change this one now to VP over V sub O and you have negative CA1 to CA2 DCA over KCA 0.69 plus CA. That's it. Now this K, if I'll transfer it here class, it would be something like this. Your K V sub O times the volume of the plug flow reactor that K transferred there will have the integral containing the unknowns left on the right side of the equation. So you have here CA times the quantity 0.69 CA. And this is from CA1 to CA2. Now the K V sub O from equation one, so from one, it has a value. K over V sub O is 0.3582. K over V sub O. So 0.3582 should be placed in here for this one. 0.3582 times the volume of the plug flow reactor, which is 4 cubic feet. So everything on the left side is known. And it will be equated to what we have on the right side. So you'll have here CA1 to CA2. Negative. Sorry. Negative. And you have DCA over CA times 0.69 plus CA. So from in here, so that's your last line here. You may take a screenshot of that. Okay, if you have taken a screenshot of that, the 0 0.3582, if you're going to multiply it to 4 feet, 0 0.3582, times 4, that should give you 1.4328. And I'll place the negative there, so I won't keep on writing the negative on that side. So you'll have negative 1.4328, now equal to the integral of CA1 to CA2 
DCA over CA times uh, what is our previous equation here? 0.69 CA. 0.69 plus CA to be exact. Now, this particular integral needs only the CA2. We need the CA2 here. So, it is important that you get to solve for CA1. So, our unknown here is actually CA2 so that we can determine the concentration of R that leaves the plug flow reactor because CA2 is coming from the plug flow reactor. Before we can have this, we need to have the CA1. So this is our equation three already. So our last equation is two. Okay, so we'll have equation three for that because we need to solve for CA1. Your CA1 is equal to CAO1 minus XA1 and your CAO minus CA1, CAO XA1 to be exact. Your CAO is given as 0 0.01. So we've solved it initially. And your XAO, rather CAO XA1 is your CRO XR1, which is 0 0.002. The amount of A reacted represents the amount of R formed in the back mix reactor. So your CA1 is 0 0.008. So this is the CA1 that you're going to place here. From three, so direct shock on that, I leave the math to you you'll be able to solve for a CA2 value, which is 0 0.003. So your unit for this is in mole per liter. Mole per liter. So you are asked for the amount of R form in the second reactor. How will that be? Okay, here, go to the illustration that we have. We need CR2, the amount of R formed in the second reactor. Or that is the final amount of R that leaves the system. Remember, you have an R formed initially from the back mix reactor plus the R formed in the PFR that would represent the R formed in your system in your system already. So we have CR2, since we are after CR2, is actually CR1, 1 plus XR2. Okay, CR1 is the initial concentration of R that leaves the back mix reactor. So you have point, rather, if you distribute that one, I'll write it here to be clearer, you have CR1, plus CR1XR2. Your CR1 is the 0 0.002, and your XR2 in your um, plug flow reactor is equally uh, actually equal to CA1XA2, the amount of A reacted in the plug flow reactor. Okay, the amount of R formed in the plug flow reactor is equal to the amount of A reacted in reactor 2, which is your plug flow reactor. And what is that? So your C, but your CA1 XA2 is equal to what is the value of the amount of A reacted in the PFR? That would be the initial concentration of A that enters the PFR, that is CA1, minus the final concentration of A as it leaves the PFR. This represents the amount of A reacted in the PFR, which is equal to the amount of R formed in the PFR. This CA1XA2 is equal to CR1XR2. A reacted is R form. A reacted is equal to the initial amount of A entering the PFR minus its final concentration. We know CA1. Uh, the value of our CA1 is here, 0 0.008. So you will have here 0 0.008. The CA2 we got from the integral we processed. 
here, 0 0.003 from in here, substitute nyo da ang CA1 pa on yung si CA2. So this is where your method of partial fractions will be used because you cannot process this in your calculator unless you do it trial and error. So your CA2 is 0 0.003. Okay, so your CR1, XR2, which is your CA1, XA2, therefore, is 0 0.005, subtracted 2. So if you go back here, this then would be 0 0.002 plus 0 0.005. Therefore, this is the final answer. The amount of R leaving the plug flow reactor will be 0 0.007 mole per liter. So that's the first requirement. The amount of R leaving in the plug flow reactor. Okay. Now we are to determine the conversion of A in the system, not just in the PFR. So we have, just like our first sample problem, CAO is equal to 1, sorry, CA2 is equal to CAO 1 minus XA. The total conversion in the system, your CA2 is 0 0.003. Your CAO is 0 0.01, as shown already. That would be 1 minus XA. So your XA here for the entire system is 0.70. So for the, for the system CSTR PFR, in that order, this is the overall conversion, 70%. As for the question of the R, the concentration of R leaving the PFR, that would be 0 0.007 as well. So 0.7 for conversion, 0 0.007 for the concentration of R that leaves, that exits the PFR. So question is, what is the concentration of R at the exit of the PFR? So that's our answer. Okay. You have any questions? Why can't I go back to the jump board? I'll stop share for now. I'll go back to the jump board. I cannot transfer. Do you have any part here that you would like us to go back to? You have any question here? Any question? No question? No, miss. Sige, ang iba niya. Okay lang na sila. Wala man sila ga-react. So, assume ko nga na-gets. Kasi ang, if your internet connection is really very slow or you're, you're getting disconnected, my recording in is a previous class ko, previous SEMS. So, you can refer to the recording uh, if it would help at all. Okay? So I'll now go back to the slides. So this is the second, okay? We have the third here. Example, I can extend because my other class is already done and we're supposed to only have review for today. 
So we're done yesterday with everything. I already gave them their last quiz. So we can continue until I finish what I need to finish. So for example, problem number three, at present, the elementary liquid phase reaction A plus B forming 2R plus S takes place in a PFR using equimolar quantity surveillance B and conversion is 96% with initial concentrations of A and B equal to one mole per liter. The first scenario is this, if a back mix reactor 10 times as large as a plug flow reactor were hooked up yes, in parallel. Me. Yes? May class kami 10 a.m. Yes. Ah, okay. May class ka mo. So tapusan ko lang ni. I leave the rest of the topics to you to listen to the recording. May ara siya recording sa canvas available for recycle reactor and the rest of the problems here. Amo na malaning last. Uh, nakita niyo man to ang memo sa VCAA nga kung may lecture kag hindi maka sync uh, synchronous tan na ah, hindi maka online ang tanan. Pwede lang ma-access asynchronously ang material sa canvas. So you have the material in canvas. I still need to cover the topics that I need to cover. So kamo na ang bahala sa hindi ko ma-cover now. Ay para nga matapos sa gidi ang topic for the summer kay hindi man pwede nga hindi siya matapos. Anyway, may recording man kamo nga magamit. Okay? Ara lang siya sa canvas. I think if I'm not mistaken, it's the last recording there for recycle reactor and the second to the last is this one. So please access na lang the recording. Sige, sige. I wait lang. Ano na oras sa Wala ko idea sang time. Eh, lang get class. It's 9.48. Sige. Kung ano lang maabtanta. Mas ma... Ma-Zoom meeting ng kamo sa 10 nyo? Oo, Guru Miss. Kay may reporting kami daan. Ah, may reporting ka mo. Diba si Mary, maano pa ka mo? Sige, lang get ha? Sige, lang get. Stop share ko.